was tearful almost. Our brand new opening for Blind Luck, The Search for Harry Grab. Oh, getting a little emotional here. Easy, Harry. You know what? We are in search for the films of Harry Grab, the greatest middleweight champion of all time, and certainly in our eyes, the greatest fighter of all time. And we're going to prove it on this show. And we've got a little bit of backlash, but hey, this is front lash time here on Blind Luck, and we are going to prove it like we do every single week. And we're going to have the Wizard from the West coming in a little bit later, Brian Quish, with all the numbers. But first, we're going to be talking about Usyk versus Dubois. What a great fight. The heavyweight champ of the world, Alexander Usyk. What an amazing fighter. And there's been some controversy with the fight, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about the odds with Brian. But boy, oh boy, the big controversy, of course, was the low blow. Yes, the low blow. Was it a low blow between these two lads? Well, of course, most people had seen it. And I guess the Brits are going, yes, it was a low blow. Why isn't Dubois the heavyweight champ? Well, I've got a different perspective than a lot of people that have a little bit more knowledge in the history of the sport can kind of look and say, you know what? Yusuf knew exactly what he was doing. Yusuf knew exactly what he was doing. Because look at this guy. This is going back in history, and this is what our sport, and this is what this show is all about. This is Gene Tunney in the fight versus Jack Dempsey in the second fight, and this is the legendary fight called The Long Count. And look what Gene Tunney's doing. He's looking right at the referee. And just like Yusick, he knew exactly what he was doing. He ended up getting up and beating Jack Dempsey and retaining his heavyweight championship, just like Yusick did. Yusick went down, saw the referee. Referee said it was a low blow, which it was. It was a low blow. It wasn't too low, but it was low enough for the referee. And what happened? Yusick got up and completely dominated that fight you know he is an amazing fighter and he showed it there and you know what so was Gene Tunney he did the exact same thing he looked he understood what the referee was doing making the count and of course they said that Tunney was down for about 16 seconds in that fight you know that fight had 120,000 people at it what an amazing amazing match in Philadelphia and in fact the lad was there. It's the last time I think he was seen in public with a patch over his eye. He ended up dying several months later, tragically. So it's up to us and our show to prove to the world that this is the man who's the greatest of all time, better than Sugar Ray Robinson, and we can prove it through statistics and through his films. Where are they? We don't know, but we think they're in somebody's attic. They have to be. They were filmed. He fought as a middleweight champion. He fought and would have been filmed with Gene Tunney when he fought for the light heavyweight championship of America. Uh, he would have had the Mickey Walker fight uh, filmed, as well as all his Tiger Flower fights, both of them at the end. Uh, several other ones. Tommy Loughran's fight uh, was supposed to be filmed, so... The show here is to compare fighters of today, Usyk and other fighters, to fighters of yesteryear, like the big guy back there. So, this is a comparable fight, Usyk and Dubois, because you know what? It's happened before. Not just the Tunney fight, where Tunney used his skills and looked at the referee just like Usyk did and got up when the referee told him to, but it actually changed hands. The heavyweight championship changed hands in 1930. See, Gene Tunney retired. Gene Tunney and the big guy, Jack Dempsey, fought twice. And they're, what a great shot that is, eh? Of the two lads. And Jack Dempsey ended up losing, of course, to Dun Tunney twice. And then Tunney ended up retiring. Tunney only fought one time after that against Tom Heaney, I believe. Uh, and then ended up retiring. So there was a heavyweight championship up for grabs. And so what happened was the two guys that were up for uh, the heavyweight championship, uh, the vacant one was Jack Sharkey and Max Schmeling. And what happened was, low blow, 
Sharky hit Schmeling right in the nuts. I hate when that happens. And down goes Schmeling. And Schmeling went down. And boy, oh boy. First time ever the heavyweight championship changed hands in the fourth round. So yeah, there is a bit of history when we talk about Usyk and Dubois. And you know what? I've had enough talking right now. We need to bring in the lad from out west, the wizard from out west, who had a really cool trip out to Ireland, his home, his homeland. So let's bring in Brian Quish, the wizard from the west. Brian, <laughs> welcome to the show once again, my friend. Thanks for having me, Scott. Hey, listen, uh, big fight. Um, we'll, before we get to uh, your big trip to Ireland, big fight uh, with what I consider the, uh, the great um, and undisputed heavyweight champion of the world today, Alexander Yusik. What did you think of the fight? I thought it was a good fight in some ways. Um, it, it showcased two different styles. Um, before we get into the styles, I uh, want to just talk about the odds, which mm. uh, you know yourself. When looking at the fight before it began, the Usyk odds, uh, if you put 100 down, he was sitting at a minus 1,100. So 100 down would only give you $109.09. Um, not going to break the bank there. So the Dubois camp would be the one, of course, the chance for any money to be made because he was coming at plus 650. So 100 down would get you uh, 750 back. And uh, the next impossible <laughs> pick would be the draw. And that was at 1800. So essentially, 100 down will give you 1900 back. Right. Uh, so that's the odds perspective. So it really wasn't a great fight from a from a betting perspective, especially knowing the different fighters and the styles. But how did I see it? As I saw it as two different types of fighters. One was incredibly technically sound, smart, and fast mm. in Usyk, and then you had the power puncher in Dubois. And I look like the speed of them is one of the fastest heavyweight fights I've seen in a long time. But I was looking at a cruiserweight fight, mm. um, places like stuff like that. So the two different styles were on show um, as far as for Usyk coming in with his smarts, his ability to jab and keep distance away. He really kept Dubois at a distance, it seemed like. And he, right. knew, Dubois, he knew Dubois' plan. Um, so the foot speed, as I said, it looks like Usyk had the foot speed of a cruiserweight. And you could, without question, right from the first round, you could tell that Dubois was coming in to punish the body. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, I think that that was um, uh, probably smart. I mean, I think there's a lot of heavyweights out there right now uh, today after that fight saying, that's how you beat uh, Yusek. Go to the body. Um, yeah. Now, let's talk about that because, I mean... Other, other than the low blow, um, Yusuf completely dominated almost every minute of the fight, despite yeah. du Dubois doing, doing okay. Um, let's talk about that uh, punch. Um, was it legal in your eyes? And, and, and tell me about what you thought um, Yusuf, would he have been able to get up had the referee said, get up, and it's a, it was a legal blow? Yeah, so to the first question without... I don't think it was a low blow at all. It hit the belt. And after the fight, I was looking at a bunch of media, social media out there, and the entire boxing, as in boxers world, said legal punch, legal punch. I didn't read one uh, social media uh, piece of information that said it was a low blow from any former boxer or current boxer. So that's the first thing right there. And it, it, yeah, if he said get up, I think he could have got up. <laughs> He's been hit harder than that, but we'll never know. Um, but he wouldn't have been the same fighter. And I think that was Dubois. That was Dubois fight to take right there. If he had to get up, if the ref said it to him. Yeah. So are you, are you thinking that um, maybe a rematch would be in order? Probably it would won't be, happen. No, but. I agree with you. Probably won't happen, but it would be the most justifiable thing to do. It, it, it Dubois deserves a rematch personally. I think um, if I was to look at the actual fight itself and kind of break down the rounds, um, the first fight, the first, it was a dance fest, the first round. I really noticed it. They were both very quick fighters. You knew right away Dubois was coming out for the body punches because he knew that was his only shot. Um, so that was the first round, like just back and forth, feeling each other out. But then the second round, it started as a jab fest. And I noticed that Usyk really kept Dubois at a distance perfectly with his jab to avoid the big power punches to the head. Um, and that's how he uses the southpaw jab brilliantly. Um, yeah. yeah, fantastic. And Dubois basically landed a couple of combinations, but nothing that would have ever hurt him. Yeah. And the same, same thing in, in the third round. Uh, nice combinations by Usyk. 
Uh, he was working the jab and he started working the left eye, I really noticed in the third round. Right. And that's when the swelling started kicking in for Dubois' eye. Um, but again, too, the one through three, he won them all. Um, and then if you look at the numbers as well as the fight, remember the fourth round, that's when Dubois actually his power punch, that's when his power punch count came up. And he actually beat Usyk in the punch numbers there. And he started to walk, started to work the body really early there. But I noticed as the round went on, um, the speed of Usyk was way too quick for Dubois to get any solid headshots in. Right. So he could get down low, but he couldn't get up high on Usyk because Usyk's foot speed and his, his guard was fantastic. Right. Yeah. And then the fifth round we'll get to, well, we all know what happened the fifth round. <laughs> mm, right. So, yeah, back to your point there about the, the, the blow, low or not blow, I think it was, it, was, it was a legitimate punch, not low at all. Right. Yeah. And it's funny, um, the controversy also was the, uh, the referee almost like um, coaching yeah. Yusuf to stay down yeah. and, take, and take more time. And yeah. that, uh, I mean, that blew up on, on social media um, big time. Um, and, and that doesn't look good on the referee at all by doing something like that. Uh, because I, I think that Usyk, um, again, and I compare him to the, the Tunney, where he, Tunney was knocked down and, and, and I think, I, I, I think Tunney would have been able to get up and I think that Usyk would have been able to get up. Now, would mm -hmm. it have made it a different a fight? Yeah, because now Dubois had something to go after. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I, I don't think Dubois had, had a huge amateur background. Usyk is one of the, the great amateur fighters of, of the last 10, 15, 20 years. And you, that, that says a lot. I mean, but his footwork as a heavyweight and his combination punching as a heavyweight has mm -hmm. mm -hmm. not been seen in a long time. Yeah, as I said, I thought I was watching like a light heavyweight, even cruiserweight fight. The speed he's, he was coming at, it was, it was lightning. He's amazing. I was trying to think of some fights, you know, if I think of Buster Douglas speed compared to Usyk speed, you know, mm. both fighting the heavyweight division, it's night and day, the two of them, yeah. Yeah. you know, and his, yeah, his, his, his footwork, his, his guard, his, his ability to keep that distance, as I mentioned before, from Dubois. So Dubois really couldn't land those power punches. He just knew he controlled the fight and he was stalking him through every round. As mentioned, because we went one through five, the only round that Dubois had any little bit of um, numbers in his favor was the fourth round. That's it. Right. And it was for a small pocket within that fourth round. Um, to carry on with the, the, the rounds, the sixth, the sixth round was very uneventful, I found. Uh, not much to it. And then as he got into the seventh round, I remember looking at the clock. And at 129 of the clock, Dubois actually got Usyk in the corner. And he had his chance to actually get some combinations in. And he went for the body instead of any head combinations. And Usyk knew it was coming because he'd been expecting the body all day. So that, I think, was the second chance for, for Dubois to get himself back in the fight after the fifth round. And he failed to go for the, the head combinations at 129 in the seventh round. And I really went, okay, this is over. Um, but it took a little bit longer, as you know. Uh, so that was unfortunate because that really was Dubois camp's chance to really get back into it. Right. And then, yeah. Yeah, he was, he had him in the corner. You'll see, and he just stayed away from the head and it was open. The guard was open. And then the eighth round, the combos by Usyk, you know, he kept stalking him, kept going for the knockout. I thought it was going to happen in the eighth, but it never. And of course, you know, the ninth round was all Usyk. Um, I believe at the numbers, the ninth round, Dubois threw 17, he landed zero and, uh, Usyk threw 32 and he landed 10. And wow. that's your, that's your ninth round right there. So well, and the off. punches were, were fast and, and combinations were, but I mean, the one punch that knocked down Dubois, it didn't, it didn't travel more than six inches. It no. was like, oh. boom, right hand and, yeah. and, and down he went. So, yeah. um, yeah. It really sets up um, more more of a you know because the rematch probably won't happen. No, um, it might, but it probably won't. Um, but it really does set up the the conversation for the big fight, mm -hmm. uh, probably in the next year of of course Usyk versus Tyson Fury. So let's talk a little bit about that. About um, you know that's the the real top of the mountain mountain goat kind of um, yeah. heavyweight fight. Tell us what yeah. you think about that. Oh, that'd be a dandy when that, when that happens. I don't think it's a case of if, it's a case of when. Sure. So we're really looking forward to it. Right now, the odds out in Vegas, the lines are for Fury is minus 250. So you put 100 down, you get 140 back. And then uh, for Usyk, obviously more generous. Uh, he's plus 200. So if you put 100 down, you get 300 back. Right. Um, so it's not a bad paying fight. 
in comparison to the Usyk versus Dubois, because pretty much most people knew, with the exception of one knockout punch by Dubois, which almost happened, right. that, that the Usyk-Dubois fight wouldn't pay well. The Fury Usyk's not going to play great, but it's still going to, if you're willing to put down a lot more than the average better, you'll make some money on it. Sure. Um, um, from an odd standpoint, that's how I see it. Uh, I think it's going to be, if you're just to think of one word, smart. I think it's going to be a smart fight. You've got two really smart boxers. Um, now, the difference with the big man with Fury is is two things. The height is he's coming in at 6'9", whereas in Usyk is 6'3". So that's going to change the tactics, I believe, you know yourself, yeah. for Usyk. Um, and also to the reach is because the reach is you're looking at 85 inches for Fury. Uh, oh, sorry, Fury. And you're looking at uh, 78 for Usyk. Right. So that's, you know, yourself right there. Those differences, the height and the reach is going to play a massive. And I think that's going to flip the script from sure. what from what Usyk did with Dubois, you know, working his jab and whatnot, going high. He's going to have to work the body on Fury. Right. I it's a big that, body. It's a big body. And as a result of it, if that's a flip the script. I think we're going to see the difference between how can Usyk now fight the body game versus the head game that he did against Dubois. Right. Um, and then lastly, as far as for how I look at it, is, is Usyk is very smart, as you know. He's very smart to figure out the unorthodox style of Fury. Um, right. Yeah, that's the thing is I think that's going to be the most intri intriguing part of the fight is how is he figuring out Fury's unorthodox style, but having to go to the body at the same time because of the height difference and the reach difference. Sure. Uh, but I think in, just if I was to be a Batman, man, put my money down, I put my money down on, on Fury uh, for three reasons. One is the height, the reach. And he's very smart as well. Right. Yeah. So and I, I don't think Usyk's going to hurt him. Um, no. I mean, if if Wilder can't hurt him, then, well, he hurt him, but can't keep him down. Mm -hmm. Then it's not like the, that Usyk will. Um, but I also think that Usyk has way better skills. As much as they say um, Fury has a lot of skills for a big man, and I know mm -hmm. he does. He's fast. Mm -hmm. He's quick. He's got good boxing skills. Um, I'd put money on Usyk. I think yeah, that he's I just a, a, a much better all-around fighter. Um, I'm going with my friend Harry Grab uh, mm -hmm. and inspiring the way he fought because when he fought as the middleweight champ, uh, and the, this is the comparison, he fought a lot of heavyweights. Mm -hmm. I don't have the exact number of heavyweights that he fought, but it was about 25 and never lost to a single one. And, mm -hmm. and, and Yusuk is not a heavyweight. He's been pushed to heavyweight because he he cleaned out the cruiserweight division. He's yeah. a cruiserweight, yeah. um, and 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 should be fighting around two hundred. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so he's going to be doing the same thing that Harry Greb did for many years. Uh, have no fear over the man that's bigger than you. He's slower, mm -hmm. but just because Fury is uh, fast for a big man yeah, doesn't I mean think. he's faster than a guy that's as fast as Usyk. So mm -hmm. I see him darting in and out and throwing, as he always has done, lots of combination punches, and I say he's going to win. He's not going to hurt him, but he's going to pepper him and, and make the big man um, tinker somewhere else. <laughs> he'll, he'll tinker in the corner. Sure he will, yeah, with his clan. Yeah, uh, yeah. As I said, I I just got a feeling about Fury with those three points I meant: the height, the reach, sure, and the smart. No. But yeah. it could obviously, you know yourself. That's why it's gambling. It can go either way, for sure. Uh, and that's why it's sports. Is the beauty of it is is one opinion versus another opinion, and we'll see right. on the day. We'll see on the sure. day. And, no, and absolutely. You, one other element we got to talk about is how much punishment could could Fury take from the quickness and amount of combinations. We see he can take a beating. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If 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 Usyk's going to throw a, s a series of combinations over all the rounds, well, we know Fury can handle it. So, yes. That, yeah. That, that, yeah. That's no question. I yeah. think it'll be competitive. Like I think what you said, it'll be a smart fight. Two yeah. smart fighters. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. And thanks for those numbers. And and yeah. let's uh, let's talk a little bit about your trip. Uh, you're just back from Ireland. Um, uh, and and I was I was telling you about um, you know go chase Katie Taylor because uh, <laughs> the, the, lots of news there in Ireland because they're always loving the fights there. But um, mm -hmm. of course Katie is 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 the darling. Um, tell tell us a little bit about the, the buzz of, of Katie Taylor over there. Oh, lots of buzz. The dames dust up in Dublin. We'll call it. Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, the odds wise, just to start off with that, as always, is sure. uh, Taylor is coming in at minus 175. So 100 down will give you 157.14. Yeah, I, healthy. I think that's healthy for this fight. And then Cameron, yep. of course, she's coming at plus one forty. So hundred down gives you two forty. So yep. and the draw comes in at plus twelve hundred, which is thirteen hundred back for a hundred down. Yeah, and you that's know we've already interesting. And you think trilogy potential, right. win win draw. Mm. So this is one where I wouldn't be afraid to put money down on a draw. I um, who knows exactly um, where it's going to go. Obviously, uh, the line we're so far away from it. But this is where it's sitting right now. Um, you've got it. Like you look at the records, you got eighteen and zero with Cameron versus twenty two and one with Taylor. We all yep. know the one, one on Taylor. Uh, wow. Question is, will it stay at one after this fight? I think it's going to be an absolute beautiful fight. I think it's going to be one of the all time greats that they talk about um, mm -hmm. women's boxing. The first one was, but this this one's going to be better, I believe. Um, if I was to pull a couple of little, hmm, how's it going to go? I think the number one thing is, can Katie keep her motions in check right. on, on, on home soil? Right. Um, because Cameron showed that she could keep her motions in check in the first fight in hostile oh. ground. She was a she pro. Was, oh, she was amazing. Yeah. She was awesome. So it was a great fight. And, yeah. and um, you know, I've, I've been going back and forth with uh, Chantel on, on, uh, on Twitter and mm. and and giving her all the props in the world because yep. I thought she I thought she was one of the most um, complete female fighters I've ever seen. Yeah, um, she did everything right against Katie Taylor. She did. You could tell they had a plan, combination of a physical yeah. plan, but a psychological plan. I think her right. camp really realized. Her camp really focused on telling her, "Hey, listen, the pressure is all on Katie. She's the one at home. She's the she's the champ. She's undisputed. Go in there and take it from her." And I think she'll have that confidence from the, well, she'll clearly have the confidence from the previous fight to walk into this fight. Question is, can, can Katie, Katie pick her part technically? Um, For sure. And then show the hard line, like the 2012 gold medalist that she was, she is. Uh, so I, I think it's, this is one, if there's ever been one that could go either way, this is, this could go either way. Um, can't wait for it. Yeah. People were on the streets. We're talking about it. I was in a pub talking to a guy about it and, oh, nice. uh, yeah, and, and we're talking, you know, what are we in here? Eighth month, we're talking three months, three and change away. And uh, he's a cab driver um, that I happened to be chatting with. And uh, afterwards, I met up with him for a meal and a drink. And he said, listen, every cab driver is dying to get the guys off the airport for this. They oh, want cool. they, they, they want to line up first. So they're, they're taking odds at who's going to actually be lining up first at the airport in front of line for cabs. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, a friend of mine's father's friend of mine's father's cab driver I went for dinner with him on the Saturday night before he flew out and he's like oh everybody's anticipating this is the payoff of all payoffs great. for sporting matches yeah. nice that's yeah. great so that's November 25th so we got a little bit of time to yeah. chat about it as we uh move forward on that one and that's great yeah. because yeah like we said that's going to be a a beauty oh, uh great. you know it's the rematch that that a lot of uh uh, a lot of the boxing world is waiting for, and, and of course, uh, the country of mm -hmm. Ireland. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so let's wrap up the show. We had a great show, but let's wrap up the show. Uh, we're going to have a weekly segment, uh, the book of the week. Um, boxing books, there are many out there, and many of them are fantastic. And I know you're a big reader. Uh, you flew over to Ireland. You had some time up in the air. Uh, when you weren't flying the plane. <laughs> so good on you yeah, that you yeah. could do two things at once. So tell us a little bit about the book um, that Stephen Brunt, uh, the writer from uh, Canada, he's one of the most prolific sports writers, and mm -hmm. boy, does he know his boxing. Tell us a little bit about Facing Ali. Oh, it's a gem. It's an absolute gem of a book. He did something that so many other writers never saw is he came out from the opponent's angle of, of Ali. As you know yourself, there's dozens, 100 plus books out there probably of Ali. Right. Uh, from Ali's perspective, Ali's history, Ali's fights, Ali's numbers, this was the opposite. He took the opponent's perspective and went to their, wherever they were, whether it be in Germany for a few fighters, over to England, Cooper, and basically said, how was the experience? How was Ali? And then how was the fight? And there's one theme that went through all of them with the exception of one fighter every fighter 14 15 chapters 14 of the chapters 14 fighters all were grateful for fighting ali and thanked fighting ali the one fellow who wasn't was mr fraser uh, 
still to this day, there's a bee in his bonnet and that's not going away, yeah. uh, which was unfortunate because it came through in the book and it, the, his, his bitterness now was written 2002, I believe is when it was first published. So we're talking years ago. Uh, but at the end of the day, he was the only man who said, oh, I was thankful for Ali. Every single one of them all once thanked him. And two, they said once the cameras went on, they realized they were dealing with a showman. And they right. knew the show. They knew the whole shtick. Um, where Joe didn't get the stick. Right. <laughs> never, never did. Never, did. never got it. And whether you go through, you know, Shivalo got it. Um, Larry Holmes, of course. <clears throat> Fraser, he said, didn't. But then uh, Tony Hunsaker, um, he got right. it. Uh, Jean uh, Pierre Koopman, Henry Cooper, uh, Ron Lyle, Chuck Wepner. Um, oh, and of boy. Course, yeah. So, and each and every one, as I said to a man, was like, wow, that was just what the, they have people coming up to them in the streets saying, even though they might talk about the European Championships with with Cooper, he says nobody wants to know about that. They don't want to talk about the Ali fight. Sure. Same with Wepner. They just want to talk about the Ali fight. So several of the fighters basically finished up the chapter saying, we are famous, even though we are not even in the upper echelon of Hall of Famers, but we are famous because we fought Ali. Right. So That's beautiful. So cool. It was yeah, a beautiful, beautiful appreciation. Yeah. No, That's cool. We'll make yeah. sure that uh, everybody go out and uh, get that book. It's called... Facing Ali by Stephen Brunt. He's an amazing writer, very well known. And World I got class. a really, when we get him on the show, I got a great story about how I met him in New York City. So, yeah, he knows his stuff in the history of the sport. So, that's really cool. Yep. Okay, so that's it for the show. I'm going to say adieu to my friend, uh, the West Coast friggin man so cool to have you on the show and and thanks a lot for the numbers and uh, we'll see you next time okay my pleasure thanks scott okay see you next time guys all right that is the show the story is of course Usyk versus dubois and boy it's gonna be Usyk versus fury we can't wait for that and how we compare that with the old guys dempsey and tunny and this man the greatest fighter of all time, Harry Greb. So we'll see you next time on The Search for Harry Greb. See you next time.